Good afternoon on this day after Election Day. Well, we are still very much <laughs> in election mode. Hmm. We'll just pause for a moment. And just if you've been zooming all over the place today like I have, fortunately a good part of the day with my granddaughter, <laughs> who now is being entertained by her grandfather, this is a place that we come to really sink into our divinely feminine wisdom. And that's the case whether, no matter what your gender is. And I just was just um, interviewed a, a little while ago for um, the, our show, our benefit that we're doing this weekend um, for the fourth U Artibus um, called Radical Voices, The Otherness of Feminism. And the conversation that we were having was what it means to talk about the divine feminine. And yes, each week I bring, I welcome in a different goddess. Sometimes they're very clear, like this week was very clear who I wanted to, to invite. Some weeks they kind of knock on my, on my heart, on my psyche and say, me, me, we want to talk. Um, but this week, the, the goddess that we're focusing on is Libertas, Libertas, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, because I, I, I want to finish that thought that came up in this interview too, and that's that we are, hello Mary, that we are in this space now more than ever of it being vitally important, crucially important that we figure out how to integrate the divine feminine, the divine masculine. We've, we've, we'll continue to live in a patriarchy for a long time, I, although not forever, but our, the, the divinely feminine wisdom that we speak of is all about cooperation and collaboration and honoring the power of vulnerability of honoring our emotions, of honoring our intuition. And so that's, none of those things are weaknesses. They are actually great strengths. And likewise, when we talk about honoring the divine masculine, that's using our brilliant brains to be able to strategize, to look at things logically and clearly, to communicate clearly. So it, you know, it's kind of the left brain, right brain combination when we talk about the divine feminine and, and the divine masculine, yin and yang. So what, and particularly right now, in the throes of this very intense, very powerful week that we are in the midst of in, in our country, the, of course, <laughs> who would show up to want to be highlighted but Libertas, who of course, I'm sure most of you know, is what the statue of, who the Statue of Liberty is based on, but she, she actually is a Roman goddess from several thousand years ago. And as you might expect, she was, um, her, her message was all about liberty and personal freedom and, and our rights, our civil rights, um, and, and talking about what it means to be a free person and what it means to, I'm looking at some of the things that I had so much fun really diving into her, freedom from restraint, um, signified freedom of action, so very in independence, all these things that uh, upon which our country was, was founded. And interestingly enough, the, this was a, a bit of, of uh, Libertas, Lady Liberty information that I didn't know, that Washington, we know of Washington DC, is known as the District of Columbia. Columbia is actually the personification that the founding fathers, it was a, a, a personification of the divine feminine. It, it was a goddess figure because our founding fathers, a good number of them, were all Freemasons, which was, and apparently still is, a fairly um, closed fraternity, but they, they really took on what it meant to, uh, to walk through life with morality and integrity and had very secret rituals and all that. But they chose and it's what the, they, they constructed Washington DC, District of Columbia, the goddess Columbia, the goddess Libertas, as, as this um, foundation of divinely feminine energy. It's basically a sanctuary for Freemasonry. 
And the word that I loved, let's see if I can find it. Um, <laughs> it's a huge Masonic shrine, which is such an interesting thing to play with. So I, I encourage you to do your own kind of um, looking around that. I'm giving you sort of the left brain, the, <laughs> the, the masculine side of what it is that, that we're, the, the energy that we're playing with today. And with the bringing in the goddess, bringing in Libertas, she, um, she is who the, here's a little picture of Libertas. She's one of the statues I don't have. Um, looks like a Greek, or I'm sorry, a Roman goddess, does she not? And of course, I don't really need to show you this, but you know what the Statue of Liberty looks like. And she, the Statue of Liberty is based on the Roman goddess Libert Libertas. And as I said, she represents all those things that we know to be um, sacred to our country um, and which we are in the process of reclaiming, I like to think. And it was, that what I love about that, you know, both those, those pictures show you that she is holding, her Liber Libertas and the Statue of Liberty are holding the Fire of Freedom is what it's called. The Statue of Liberty, if you've ever if you've ever visited it, I live in New York City, so I'm right there, though I haven't been in, in several years. Uh, she is she has broken chains at her feet, which represent the freedom from tyranny. Um, there's so much symbolism. She's holding a tablet that has July 4th on it. So she's all about freedom. She's all about those qualities, those that morality, all of the, the foundational tenets that our country was based on and that we are reclaiming. We, as, as we speak, I, am, I, can only be, I can only be sure that we are. There was also, and I found this was kind of interesting, there was also an Egyptian goddess of liberty with a name, um, it's, it's T-H-M-E-I, and apparently is pronounced um, Thema, Thmea, Thmea, that's what it is. And she was the Egyptian goddess of freedom, justice, honor, divination, that's fun, balance, equality, foresight, morality. And she represents the law. So all of this, and really it's part of what the Freemasons were about too, was standing by the letter of the law. So let's bring all of those qualities. I mean, I, I invite you, what I wanted to do today, which I will do, you know that I often love to, to teach chants here. This one I've actually done before. I did it on around 4th of July, but it, oh, it just feels so powerful for right now. I invite you just for a moment to wherever you are to just sit and close your eyes for a moment to picture whatever your image is in your mind's eye. That fire, that torch of freedom. Let that light shine. Imagine yourself as her. Imagine an image of her shining that in all the dark places that exist right now in our country, in the world. Shining the light of liberty, the light of personal freedom, the light of communal and global freedom. So huge for us right now. Think about the qualities that you want to embody now in the days and the weeks and the months ahead. Think about what ways you can support the movement of truth to power, speaking truth to power, using that light of freedom to guide us. And the chant I will teach you, and I invite you just over the next several days as this week unfolds, to carry this with you. Chants are a way of creating a vibration in our body so they work on us very deeply. And it goes like this. I'll sing it three times. You're certainly welcome to join in. We can rise with the fire of freedom. Truth is the fire that burns our chains. We can stop the fire of destruction. Healing is the fire running through our veins. We can stop 
sorry, we can rise with the fire of freedom. Truth is the fire that burns our chains. We can stop the fire of destruction. Healing is the fire running through our veins. We can rise with the fire of freedom. Truth is the fire that burns our chains. We can stop the fire of destruction. Healing is the fire running through our veins. So I invite you to take your own torch of freedom, your own fire of liberty within, and let it shine in the world. Whatever's going on around you, whatever is swirling in the ethers and in presently on the ground around us. Hold your own light of freedom. Hold your own truth, your own intention for healing for yourself, for this country, and move forward carrying your own light, your own torch of freedom. And come back and sing that song with me. <laughs> I'll end singing it one more time through and then go forth and carry your torch of freedom forward. We can rise with the fire of freedom. Truth is the fire that burns our chains. We can stop the fire of destruction. Healing is the fire running through our veins. That's it. Thank you so much for being with me. Namaste, walk through this week with truth and power, light and freedom. Until we are together again, bye for now. <laughs>